Hola, Animigos, and welcome to Keyframers. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw. And I'm your host, Stephen Korshid. Right now, we're giving a quick overview of some techniques we use to build this awesome uh, iOS cursor highlight animation. So in order for the cursor to sort of morph into this button shape and then morph back out, uh, we have to keep track of two things. First of all, we have to keep track of the cursor. And that includes its X and Y position and also its dimensions, its height and its width, which we do have in the CSS. So we don't really have to worry about that since we have a base height and width of 19 pixels. Um, we also have to keep track of the, the button rect. And obviously the button's not really moving anywhere, so we don't have to do too much tracking with that. Um, but essentially, once we hover over the button, which is this mouse enter event over here, um, we get the rectangle of the button. And then we're going to calculate a few things. First of all, on the cursor, we're going to get the hovered target, which is that button. We're going to get the X and Y position of that. And uh, we're also going to get the width and height of that button. And that way we could do some calculations using CSS variables directly on the cursor so that it could morph from its smaller size to its larger size. And so let's take a look at the CSS and see how that's done. Okay, so we're in the cursor. Uh, we're tracking the, um, let's see. Okay, yeah. We're, so, we're using multiple CSS variables yeah. here. Our, we're setting our initial <laughs> cursor lot. size uh, with uh, this these base W and base H uh, mm -hmm. values so that we can do calculations to get the difference or the delta um, later on. Right. Um, so the cursor actually always stays that height. We're just going to fake the size later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we're not hovering, we're just moving the cursor exactly to where the pointer is. And so that's what that X and Y is for over here. We're translating it to exactly where it is. But since we want to center the cursor as well, uh, Shaw out of this negative 50%, negative 50% to just place it right in the center. Now, when we hover, we need to do a few things. We need to not only um, have it sort of be sticky on the button, but we also have to know how, like, where the cursor is relative to where the button is. For example, if the button is all the way to the left, we want that to be a value like negative 0.5. And when it's all the way to the right, we want it to be positive 0.5. Why we chose 0.5, that's my bad, but there you go. <laughs> and, and, and so that's that PX and PY, which is just a convention I use. It stands for percentage X and percentage Y. And so if you take the distance between the cursor and the actual uh, element's left or X position, and you divide it by the width of the button, you get that uh, value between zero and one. So you just subtract 0.5 and you have negative 0.5 to 0.5, where zero represents the center of the, uh, of the button. And so we do the same for PY, and uh, we are going to add that down here in the transform. So we're going to, uh, let's see, we're, we're doing some translation and then some inverse translation. And we calculate the, I, I, or at least I believe so. So we calculate the inverse translation uh, by multiplying that PX, which again is that number between negative 0.5 and 0.5 by 200%. And um, also the, uh, the yeah this this hover x and hover y is oh, getting the, the, is getting the, the, the element static. in the position of of the of the button so that that's actually positioning our cursor at the buttons yeah. uh, top and top and left so yeah David's taking so that if, off so you can if see we that. remove that yeah. it just sticks it doesn't really do much of anything so uh, that's how we get our little parallax effect we're getting that number between negative point five and point five multiplying it by 200%. So it goes relative to the height and width of the, of the, uh, the rectangle, or actually this is of the cursor. Anyway, and, and then we are scaling so that that cursor is the size of the button. And we do that by calculating the DW and DH. DW is the percent, um, basically how much it grew width-wise, and the DH is how much it grew height-wise. And so if we invert those by doing one divided by DW and one divided by DH, then we have a scale to basically make the cursor a lot bigger and make it scale to the exact dimensions of the button. 
Now we need to add this translate 50%, 50%. So that again, we have it centered and you can see what happens if we have that off. It just pins itself to the top left corner. So if we move it, then, um, yeah, now it's at the right position. Right. And that, and that's partially because we're changing the scale so much, uh, that we need to then, uh, center it based on that new scale. So this 50%, 50% is, is applying after the scale and, and that helps it get in the proper place. Right. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot, a lot happening there, but you can go back and watch the full <laughs> video where we, uh, dive a lot more into these techniques and try out a lot of different, uh, approaches to this and, and talk through it all. So, uh, definitely watch that if you're interested. Uh, and we have other helpful links, uh, down below. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please leave a comment or ask in the chat and we'll be happy to answer. Our show is supported by our sponsors, CodePen at CodePen.io and CSS Tricks at CSS-Tricks.com and viewers like you. And hey, if you've enjoyed this episode and you want to see more of us or the animations or both, two for the price of one, you can support us by pledging at Patreon.com slash Keyframers. That's right. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, adios, amigos. Adios. Thank you.